honor to have uh, your session especially because uh, being a colleague we never got an opportunity like this so it will be all in all a wonderful experience that is what i believe so talking about uh, sir's profile as i told sir is currently serving as a professor and head of department in faculty of post graduate studies mefgi sir completed his b in civil engineering and masters of engineering from ms baroda in geotechnical engineering sir has completed his phd uh, from svnit surat in year 2012 uh, sir has got two lifetime membership that uh, he has been associated with indian geotechnical society and indian society of technical education uh, his research area basically includes soil structure interaction that is seismic analysis of bridge structures including or considering the soil structure interaction interaction effects use of plastic waste in improving the soil bearing capacity uh, use of plastic bottle waste as geocell in pavement repair so that is something that i always appreciate uh, applications of nano material in civil engineering and use of waste material in concrete for the improvement of its various property so apart from that most of you are familiar uh, we have been fortunate enough to coordinate with sir from last few days so now without wasting much of your time i would please request dr siddharth sasar to take the session forward sir over to you please thank you thank you dear kunal for nice words and uh, if you can stop sharing your screen then i can start my yeah sure sir. presentation so kunal and aditya they are the uh, very active faculty in our department and uh, with their help we are able to do all this uh, sdtp nice and smoothly so thanks again to both of you uh, so good afternoon everyone and uh, we are on the uh, third day third session and that is the application of nanotechnology in geotechnical engineering so uh, nanotechnology actually uh, impressed me uh, the next speaker of tomorrow's dr santosh sai is my elder brother and uh, he actually imbibed this passion in me that uh, what is nanotechnology and uh, how wonderful its applications are and then i was inclined and uh, i started uh, doing research in this area earlier uh, today's morning speaker were also uh, wonderful uh, dr ajay ranka wherein he just narrated the wonderful application of the zydex product and that is all nanotechnology based so let me take you to this uh, journey right so before we start uh, just look at our uh, lush green campus uh, this is where we are located in rajkot and again uh, because we are uh, uh, taking and adapting few pictures or video from youtube and uh, uh, other web resources and we are uh, not using it for the commercial purpose so we respect the authors uh, authority on the content and we respect privacy policy uh, wherever it is mentioned we have mentioned the courtesy and reference also however it is for academic purpose so by chance if it is ignored uh, please uh, forgive us uh, so the flow of the presentation is that uh, we'll give you introduction to nanotechnology we'll see what are the types of nano material and their property first we'll see what are the generalized application of the nanotechnology in civil engineering and then we'll narrow it down towards the geotechnical engineering and then we will conclude the session so uh, what is the outcome why why we are conducting this so at least after the successful completion of this lecture because we are preparing for nb and we are taught that nothing should go waste so i am sure that after completing this uh, lecture you will understand what are the application of nanotechnology and various properties of the nano material and analyze the nano material for their potential application in civil or geotechnical domain 
so these are the two outcome which i am expecting that you will be able to learn so nano means a very small person in greek it is meaning dwarf and in morning we learn that nanometer is nanotechnology is something where we deal with the material uh, in hundreds of nanometer and uh, ajay ranka sir rightly said that uh, nano dimension is very small 10 to minus 9 right it is so small that we work at a atom level and it's very surprising that this technology was uh invoiced i think in way back 80 years where there were the roots and uh, this gentleman richard feynman then write that uh, there is a plenty of room at bottom it means uh, there is a huge scope of nanotechnology in future so scanning tunneling microscope and uh, other things were invented in 1981 probably my, that is my birth year and nanotechnology uh, was coined by norio tiyonguchi in 1974 so working at nanometer scale is very difficult and to work at this size uh, we require uh, very sophisticated instruments scanning electron microscope tunneling electron microscope so in next slide we'll compare in the morning sir said that our human hair is several thousands nanometer right so here you can see that uh, a beach sand is 90 micrometer human hair is 50 to 70 micrometer right and if you compare and if you compare a nano fiber then it is almost 80000 larger you can see in the background the human hair is placed and in the background nano fibers are placed so it is so thick you might have seen this hair in uh, lots of shampoo advertisements that keratin protein is improving your hair so that is the human hair so human hair is almost 80000 nanometer thick red blood cell is 5000 nanometer in diameter a uh, dna deoxyribonucleic acid which we have that is 2.5 nanometer wide and 10 hydrogen atoms are in side by side it will measure only 1 nanometer so again if you want to compare a uh, dna then if you zoom or if you magnify dna by 1000 times you will get one bacteria and if you uh, magnify bacteria 1000 times then you will get one water droplet so it is almost 10 this to 6 times so dna to water droplet there is a 10 to the power 6 magnification similarly if we compare carbon nanotube human hair and a building then compared to carbon nanotube our human hair is almost 10 this to 5 times bigger and from human hair to our building it is 10 to 5 times bigger so you can imagine at what level we are working and we will be wondering that how this uh, is possible so there are very sophisticated instruments uh, so in figure we have scanning electron microscope and we have uh, a tunneling electron microscope so we'll see uh, both uh, this and i'll like to show you some videos so that uh, just hold on a uh, video screen is visible participants uh, no sir screen has yet not changed video video screen is not visible no, no, no sir it is on this uh, the uh, presentation is being okay. displayed yeah now now it's clear sir okay so with this with small video we'll see that how uh, the image looks like just like in our 12 standard maybe we have seen our chick cells and onion cells in microscope that was micro 10 to minus 6 now this is at 
zoom level is nano right so just see how it looks like audio is also audible right we have seen how nanotubes produced by arc discharge are deposited on the cathode yes are audible produced by cvd or chemical vapor deposition can be obtained on a base in this video we use electron microscopy to show how different those samples are at high magnification but first let's look at them with the naked eye Nicole is holding two samples one produced by arc discharge and another one produced by CVD remember we said that arc discharge doesn't produce great quantities so guess which one is which let's go to Oxford and use their scanning electron microscope or SEM to have a closer look at the samples first we need to put our sample in the holder for the SEM and then Nicole puts the holder into the microscope we can see the sample using a camera which is inside the microscope. We need to set up the SEM, but with someone as experienced as Nicole, this doesn't take long. This is the CVD sample at a lower magnification, but let's go to the highest possible magnification of the SEM. Now we can see the individual tubes. Let's change the sample and look at the arc discharge tubes. At low magnification we can see already that with arc discharge we have produced other forms as well as nanotubes. But let's zoom in to find individual tubes. And there they are. Let's go now to an even higher resolution microscope, the Transmission Electron Microscope, or TEM. The resolution is higher and also the microscope is bigger, it takes almost a whole room. Nicole puts our samples in an appropriate holder and introduces it into the microscope. Again, we need to set up the microscope before we take our images. These two images are an example from each sample. There you see how the arc discharge tubes are much more straight, more perfect, while the CVD tubes are more wavy because they have many more defects in their walls. I hope it's clear to see that the different production techniques produce samples of very different qualities with different structured nanotubes. Nicole gave me a great example. Nanotubes look like spaghetti. When they are produced by arc discharge, they looked uncooked. When they are produced by CVD, they look cooked. So by this video, just I wanted to uh, tell you that that how uh, people are working with uh, nano level, right? And these videos are almost uh, 10 to 15 year old. Right. I think one of the participants, Trupti Parmar, Madam, has raised her hand. Any problem, ma'am? Or any doubt? You can unmute. Okay. Anyway, so uh, working at nano level is uh, that much uh, uh, small and it is difficult. Not everybody can uh, do this. So we require a training and we can do that. So uh, scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope, atomic force microscopy, right? Uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, crystallography, electron param magnetic resonance, near field scanning optical microscopy. So these are the instruments. So again, with one video, would like to see that how these uh, uh, nano level things are working. Okay, how this all microscope works on which principle.
The Earth. Let's take a look at our planet on a new scale. A billionth of a meter, a nanometer. Video is very large, so we'll skip few portions just to make you highlight what are the important glimpses. Suddenly, it seems to have grown immensely. An equally radical revolution has been brought about by nanosciences and technologies. Finalement, nanotechnology, qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? Du médical. A day's travel. The distance between a meter and a billionth of a meter, roughly the same gulf, but taking just a few seconds. Now we're heading deep into the world of nanoscience, down to the dimension of an atom. To understand today's scientific nano revolution, we must first take this plunge into a sea of atoms. New landscapes, new sensations. This hidden world surrounds us at all times on every side. Each white ball is a cloud of electrons, concealing an atomic nucleus. You're about to discover how scientists have reached this frontier, the land of the atom, and opened up an infinite new field of research and practical applications. On peut, comme premier axe, en des volumes très fibilités, de faire des films. Work on the nano before and after, just like job. On the left, the invented a new microscope, only to discover that it could manipulate atoms too. With this tool, seeing is touching. Like a blind man's probing stick, the tip of the microscope feels the atoms to display their contours. Ça représente une pointe avec euh, idéalement un petit atome au bout. Et donc je vais approcher cette pointe de la surface. Ici, c'est la surface d'atomes. On voit déjà d'ailleurs que le, le petit palpeur peut, doit avoir à peu près la même dimension que, la, que les objets que l'on va regarder. Et on va déplacer cette pointe sur la surface, très très proche de la surface, pour enregistrer les interactions entre la pointe et la surface. In this animated sequence, the tip made up of atoms is bathed in a blue glow linking it to the surface observed. This glow represents an exchange of electrons between the surface atoms and those forming the tip. On this scale, the atoms can swap electrons. This is what happens as the tip of the microscope moves. With a scanning microscope such as this, pictures on the screen do not represent light, but rather computation. They are actually a measurement of electron flow voltage and intensity, changing with every movement across the measured atoms. This provides a sort of relief map of the surface examined, atom by atom. It doesn't revolve around a nucleus. Time to time, an electron may happen to move a little further from its nucleus than usual. Since there's necessarily another atom close by on this scale, the electron sometimes finds itself in the cloud of electrons of this other atom, having broken through the barrier that held it around its own nucleus. This electron transfer is what we call the tunnel effect. It explains a large number of physical phenomena. Tip of the microscope, a given atom can be attracted. This tool that can feel matter and thus give us an image can also sculpt it. By gouging out atoms, it can etch lines or more complex patterns to build electronic circuits, for instance. In race, engineers. This has enabled hard disk capacity to be increased tenfold. Killer robots convert. 
Successive images are needed to check that it has really been displaced. Mission accomplished. So what they are trying to convey the message here is that, that nanotechnology is manipulating materials at nano level. So for example, uh, <coughs> you have a bag, maybe your uh, luggage bag or school bag. So if you randomly put your luggage without folding or without arranging systematic, then it will have a large voids and uh, uh, they are not arranged properly. You can say amorphous structure. But on the other hand, if you arrange it systematically one over the other, then probably you have more denser structure uh, and uh, less voids. So what they are conveying message that it is possible to play with the atomic structure and rearrange the atoms at nano level. And that is what they are demonstrating. Just watch carefully. Marks are an electron microscope image of the molecule. And here is a more detailed representation. Pushed by the tip of the tunnel effect microscope, it moves rubbing against the surface. Successive images are needed to check that it has really been displaced. Mission accomplished. To make this movement more precise, researchers are trying to modify the initial structure of the molecule by adding paddle wheel extensions. Ça joue le rôle un peu d'engrenage. Ça bute contre un atome et ça tourne. Throughout Europe, scientists are working on many other types of nanorobot, which may be able to move hundreds of thousands of molecules at once, where the tip of the tunnel effect microscope can only handle one at a time, although other avenues are also being explored. Au lieu d'avoir à fabriquer ces objets, c'est spontaneously formed structure. Found the carbon chain, this one is 60. The mechanical property is determined by how these two atoms are connected to each other, how strongly they are connected. So in the diamond case, this connection is very strong. The, this, the uh, carbon nanotube, the connection is even stronger than the diamond. It has basically half of C60 at this end and half of C60 at that end, and then is a tube of, of graphite, a flat sheet which is rolled into a tube. To obtain nanotubes, take two pure carbon graphite electrodes connected to a DC generator in an atmosphere of helium, an inert gas that does not react with carbon. At 4000 Celsius, the graphite fuses and matter torn from the electrode on the left is deposited on the right-hand one, forming nanotubes. After cooling, they can be collected from the freshly produced tip there are hundreds of We already seen that video that how by cathode vapor deposition nanotube looks like. This is the method. Thousands of nanotubes here, so small that the knife doesn't damage them. Forming 90% of this powder, they are only visible through a microscope. This long structure spanning the screen measures about 5 to 10 microns in length for 10 to 40 nanometers in diameter. Now, the amazing thing about this material is that it is perhaps the strongest object that has ever been made, this tube. And now you have a material that if you could put them in, in bundles of maybe a million, or maybe much more than that, a million, million, million of these, you will have a, a material which is a um, 100 times stronger than steel and one-sixth the weight. And that's not all, since they're perfect electrical... But that means that whatever you put in this end gets to the other end. And that means that these incredibly thin um, sort of light wires could replace the copper wires, aluminium wires that we use today in transmitting electricity and with zero loss. The model more simple is the following. Pensemos que tenemos los átomos Two tubes on silicon chip components. Uh, Corolla. Dus dan komen ze op het oppervlak terecht, op die chip. En een heleboel van die nanobuisjes die komen ernaast terecht. En dan de volgende stap is gewoon te rinsen van de excess solutie. Het lijkt alsof alles is gegaan, maar in feite zijn er veel nanotubes op de surface. En dan eindelijk gewoon... 
draft worden. Maar wat we nu doen met dat druppeltje, is we hebben in dat druppeltje al die nadelbuisjes uh, lopen. En dat laten we vallen op het oppervlak. Dus dan komen ze op het oppervlak terecht, op die chip. En een heleboel van die nadelbuisjes die komen ernaast terecht. Maar een enkele nadelbuis die gaat precies tussen die twee elektrodes zitten ook. En als we dus een droge chip hebben gemaakt, hebben we die nanobuis en kunnen we dus elektrisch... Tail of the nanotube. Here, one of the nanotubes is in contact with the electrodes and carries electrical current almost instantaneously. Throughout Europe, researchers are working on electronic components for use in increasingly tiny and ever more powerful circuits. Jean-Marie Laine, for instance, aims to use chronique, des petits ronds, millisecondes, l'origine de la vie, etc. Mais aussi mettre en œuvre ces auto-organisations et ces principes, ces concepts de base pour produire spontanément des structures d'une certaine nature. In short, what I am trying to convey here is that working at such a small level is possible and uh, by changing this property at atom level imparts amazing new property at level or you can say macro level. So the definition of nanotechnology is that uh, understanding, control, and restructuring of matter in the order of the nanometers, right? And it will impart new properties to the material because the gravity is unimportant, electrostatic force are taken over the, by the quantum effects, and the proportion of atoms on the surface increases relatively to those inside. And because of all these effects, a new novel properties are imparted to the material and we call it nano effects, right? And another example to uh, uh, give you is that at nano level, the surface area is also increasing tremendously. For example, if you take a large sugar cube and regular sugar crystals and powder sugar, which one melts early in the water or lemonade? Obviously, sugar powder will melt earlier, faster, because of the high specific surface area. So if you take a cube of one centimeter, then area is six centimeters square. If you divide this into one millimeter all across the boundary, then the area becomes 60 centimeters square. But if you divide it into the one nanometer, then the surface area would be, you can imagine, 60 crores, right? Sorry, six crores centimeter square. So that is the effect of the surface area. And that's how it is become very quick or highly reactive product. So all these nanomaterial and because of all these nano manipulation, for example, carbon nanotube, their tensile strength is increasing tremendously. Uh, can you believe that the mild steel compared to mild steel, its strength would be 150 times. Its uh, thermal conductivity would be increasing. Its transmissibility, electric current capacity will also increase. Certain time, the physical characteristic changes. For example, gold, if you convert it to nano level, it will become liquid. Similarly, inert or inactive meter, uh, material can become catalyst. A silver, you might have heard silver nanotechnology, washing machines are coming, right? Probably Samsung washing machines are there. So they are using that, we are using silver nanotechnology. So silver gets antibacterial property and so on, right? So another uh, very fine video, which is my favorite, right? That will even open more horizons. First thing is that it can make surface hydrophobic. What uh, Ajay Ranka said uh, in the morning that they are making surface hydrophobic. So this is how surface are made hydrophobic.
almost any material can be coated the periphery is treated right so water droplet is not here but it will go and merge the funnel you can see plastic sheets hammers anything gloves shoes paints you can see our concrete lab concrete mixer machines and see this pipe this so shoes are coated no mud even fabric are now coated
Okay. So just uh, the glimpses we have given that what is the power of nanotechnology and in various, whether it is health, medical, engineering, environment, consumer, in any branch you take, material improvement, paints, coating, construction, environment, everywhere nanomaterial and nanotechnology is useful, right? I received one question, uh, we'll answer in the last HEMA, right? So nanomaterials are many carbon nanotube. It is classified as a single wall carbon nanotube, multiple carbon nanotube, buckyball. Uh, if it is a paper-like sheet, it is known as graphene. Then we have nano silica. You add word nano if it is powdered or by chemical method, if it is reduced to a size of nano, hundreds of nano or tens of nano, then it is a nano clay, nano cement, nano soil, like that, nano silica, nano titanium dioxide, like that. So this is the figure of single wall carbon nanotube and multiple carbon nanotube. Multiple carbon nanotube is just like telescope one over another. So compared to single wall carbon nanotube, multiple carbon nanotube is having uh, more application and it is more versatile. Bucky ball, bucky paper. So what are the strength or what are the properties of carbon nanotube? So single sheet of graphite is called graphene and carbon nanotube is derived from the graphene by arc discharge method. And uh, the carbon nanotube tensile strength, if I compare here, this is where you can see the Concrete young modulus 30 gigapascal and tensile strength 0 0.007, density only 2.3 gm per cc. Whereas steel, you get 208 uh, young modulus uh, in gigapascal, tensile strength 1, and density 7.8 gm per cc. But carbon nanotube, you see, young modulus is almost uh, of. Uh, 1054 and its tensile strength is 150 times more and at the same time density is 1.3 only so you can imagine that if we are uh, using this right uh, for example uh, cement concrete or steel is replaced with carbon nanotube then uh, what amazing we can do, right? Uh, I'll show you one hypothetical picture, right? Then probably in future, we can have a cantilever like this, right? Because it is uh, one third weight, one sixth, sorry, one sixth is the weight and it is 150 times stronger, right? Now, if we compare single wall and multi-wall carbon nanotube, then these are the property, right? So CNT can be used in concrete to increase the strength. CNT can be used in water purification. Carbon nanotube, CNT can be used in photovoltaic cell. CNT can be used in build bucky paper for aircraft and car composite. Uh, one year back, uh, when I wanted to purchase a laptop, I went there and they said sir you use this dell laptop because it has a carbon uh, composite body even if it is uh, dropped uh, from your table it will not break so probably there are elements of carbon and we know the carbon is the strongest material and carbon nanotube is even stronger than that and even carbon nanotube can be used to make uh, cut or bulletproof resistance, right? So uh, I have one amazing video, uh, then you, it will surprise you that how it is uh, used, right? And just, uh, uh, just watch this video. Wait a minute.
just a minute I, i'll explore that and why it is not playing New screen is visible to everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. Why am I still alive when I believe any of this cut could have led to serious bad injuries? And the reason is I wear a garment made of our own fabric. The garment is called Slash Pro. Slash is the clothing and the fabric we are using is our very, very own. And boom, as you can see, I'm not cut at all. That's awesome. It's just red lines because I was pushing it so hard to cut through this shot on my body. But as you can see, this shot is uh, stopped from cutting. That's amazing. Let's try this again. End of stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> you did it in purpose. Okay. What? So that is the power of the carbon nanotube and related stuffs, right? So next material is nano titanium dioxide uh, it breaks down the organic pollutants it is volatile organic compounds and bacterial membranes uh, through powerful catalytic reaction and uh, it is imparting a hydrophobic property as well as it is uh, its white pigment it gives extra brightness what earlier uh, sir was telling that mineral coating so it is ex excellent reflective coating, uh, uh, hydrophilic and uh, anti-fogging coating, right? So uh, this, uh, in the presence of the UV radiation, it has antibacterial uh, properties and uh, it reacts and uh, make it uh, a clean, self-cleaning material. So. The one of the application is air purifying concrete and snow whiteness is imparted like Taj Mahal. 
right? So Jubilee Church in Rome is made with this uh, material called nanotitanium dioxide. Then similarly silica, so traditional silica when manipulated and reduced to the nanosile and uh, like uh, nano silica can react chemically with the concrete and CSH gel and it can impart higher strengths and we see so many papers. Similarly, aerogel is another application because we are we want to see geotechnical applications so that I'm skipping it very fast, right? Uh, the uniform dispersion of light is possible with this, right? Uh, Further uh, noise proof insulation, then photovoltaic cells, right? So there are so many self cleaning applications. So no efflorescences, no white stains. It will uh, same. This is one is treated and this is not treated, right? Hydrophobic, right? So surface area, uh, the contact angle, right? It is greater than 120, so it is super hydrophobic less than 30, so it will uh, hydrophobic. So it was inspired from nature that how lotus on lotus surface water is hydrophobic. And from there they found that the sir in the morning explained that silane and uh, SiO, Si bond is replaced with the SiOH bond. That is that uh, this paints also sir talk in the morning. That is these paints, right? So glass also, it can uh, change uh, color uh, and it can be translucent and uh, opaque depending upon the person's nano electronics, lots of applications. Samsung recently launched the foldable mobile very uh, recently, right? So tremendous application in environmental engineering also, water purification, right? So we know the basics, uh, this is the nucleus, proton atom, and electrons, cation, anion, positive, negatively charged, right? So these uh, strong bonds are hydrogen bond, right? Weak bonds are Van der Waals bonds, right? So uh, nanotechnology can help in this removal because it, uh, it it is chemically reactive by both uh, catalyst as well as the higher surface area. So in your house, you may have a reverse osmosis RO water plant, which uses carbon. If you can see uh, carbon is used to remove order and smell from the water, activated carbon. Similarly, uh, I, I think he is a professor Pradeep in IIT Mumbai. Who, who is working in the purification of the water and water filter, right? Similarly, self-consolidating concrete, everyone is uh, aware of, uh, so I'm not going in that detail. Self-healing, we are inspired from nature, how our bone is healing ourselves. Uh, when uh, orthopedic doctor install plates or rods inside our bone and then naturally it heals. So similar properties we are trying to impart, right? So there are micro capsules in which some uh, uh, calcium or similar agents are there. So when crack is reaching here, it will expose to the moisture and it will jellyfy. So we are trying to achieve the self-healing effects also, right? Uh, uh, these are the nano, tube like a straw and you can directly drink the water and it will be purified. Application to concrete, right? So uh, remotely uh, it can be controlled with the help of uh, uh, wireless data, IoT, and that is also possible. Uh, that is another issue we will not uh, discuss right now. But yes, uh, nanotechnology when uh, added uh, uh, in a cement concrete, it uh, imparts novel properties. So nano cement has the potential to create new paradigm in this area, can be used as a tough, durable, high temperature coating. And this is achieved by mixing carbon nanotube uh, in which cement material to fabricate fiber composite, 
which results in outstanding performance. We have a fabric of concrete. We have transparent concrete. We have a very high strength concrete. Uh, uh, nano concrete, uh, if we add a very few percentage of uh, uh, carbon nanotube in concrete, then its strength can be increased. So we can have a high strength concrete, uh, bendable concrete, right? In our institute also, we try uh, to have self-consolidating concrete modified with the carbon nanotube. We tried 0%, 0.1%, 0.3%, 0.5%. We completed all these tests, slump flow, L box, U box. And what we found that uh, uh, the strength that increases tremendously. Uh, so this is the 90 days strength. Original mix was just of uh, M20 and see uh, the strength uh, was uh, almost 90 days strand was almost 75, right? So just by adding 0.5% of carbon nanotube, I think that was the question of the HEMA edge, right? Is carbon nanotube durable in concrete? They are very much durable in concrete. The, this question is very important. How we do dispersion? Because it's something that is very challenging. So there are certain chemicals and uh, I think uh, hexa mosfet dodecyl, uh, I forgot that chemical name in one of the research paper, I found that. So we require that dispersing, uh, we call it bubble effect. For example, if you add bon vita in milk, you will get lots of lump or any powder. If you add it in water or milk or buttermilk, it gets powdered form. Similarly, this carbon nanotube are very small. And when you add it uh, into the cement directly, it is very difficult. So we require some dispersing agent for that. So I'll provide you uh, which material we have used, right? So the idea came in our mind that if we make concrete hydrophobic, then all the root cause problems like uh, alkali sulfate reaction, chloride attack, sulfate attack, corrosion, carbonation, directly indirectly it is attributed to the micropores and micro cracks. If that is being uh, uh, covered or if it is made water resistance, then we can uh, increase the durability. So one of the student worked on nano titanium dioxide so from the literature, the dose was decided uh, and we varied up to 2%. And this is the nano titanium dioxide and uh, uh, up to 1.5% by weight we added. And ultimately this was the outcome that we could make it hydrophobic. So, Self-cleaning windows, uh, that is possible. We discuss these abilities, right? Similarly, nanotechnology has great application in contaminant removal. Uh, if somebody is interested, they can search on this uh, nano zero valent ion, right? Nano size zero valency ion. Uh, so they absorb uh, toxic substances. So because of very high specific surface area, so this is that nano zero valentine. So ferrous, we are not going in deep into this chemistry, but this has potential to absorb uh, uh, any type of uh, microbial uh, reactions. So if anybody is interested, they can read this paper from Krishna Reddy, right? So nano iron powder is that. So just schematically, I can explain you that if there is a, a contaminant a plume, then you can inject this. And by this, uh, the groundwater will be purified after chemically reacting in this zone. So you can actually protect uh, like just like permeable reactive barrier or slurry or something like that. 
right so reactive treatment zone so those who are from environmental background they can understand this terminologies right so pesticides removal also is possible so by examining all these property we thought that if it has potential in paints potential in uh, glass and concrete then it must have certain applications in soil also so that's why we explored uh, uh, its application in geotechnical engineering right and basically at soil we already work at uh, certain nano levels because our clay mineral uh, are uh, f uh, several nanometer so we restricted ourselves up to micron level so we were just entering indirectly at nanotechnology but we were not knowing that it is nanotechnology but nanotechnology manipulation very much covers the geotechnical engineering when we deal with the clay particles right so we try and explore what could be the possible application one of the application uh, dr ajay ranka explained in the morning that he invented a uh, few materials uh, zycosil uh, terracil right so they have made the soil hydrophobic right so that is one of the uh, application another application which came in my mind that when we are dealing with the clay soil the most problem we face is of the low permeability and particularly when they are near the ground water region due to capillary rise uh, they swell and shrink and if we want to do construction then we have to allow consolidation to take place and we want to make consolidation very fast either we do pre loading or we install prefabricated vertical drain so we thought that uh, can we make soil hydrophobic and our problem is resolved and that was my idea but when i searched i found that people have registered patent on this so let us see that just sorry uh, i video screen is available yes sir available benefits of the modern road construction methods in order to convince yourself that the construction process can be cheaper faster and more environmentally friendly in the beginning traditional construction methods involved a huge mass of soil excavation and transportation to that end there is a large amount of heavy transport used producing harmful exhaust gases including co2 that contributes to environmental degradation additionally this kind of transport destroys the local roads and there is no surface area for soil stockpiling in fact most of the soil does not have to be excavated or transported the modern road construction methods effectively use the mass of soil in place and create a resistance to damage and a safe road base while building the road base with traditional road construction methods the same heavy transport is used to transport the excavated soil and to carry the precious aggregates which are valuable natural resources built over hundreds of millions of years however there is a possibility for effective modification of existing native soil directly on the construction site all through the process of modifying and hydrophobing gained by mixing specialist components and available soil in place during this process the changes in soil physical and chemical properties contribute to water deprivation and resistance to the destructive effect as a result there is a consistent and resistant to damage road base exceeding even the highest aggregate quality the day has come to put a modern road into use during the construction process there has been seven times less heavy transport use four times less construction machines employment and six times less co2 emission into the atmosphere moreover there are no dump areas or destroyed roads and over time and vibrations the road base becomes even more durable for comparison the road building with the traditional road construction methods is not even 50% finished the local roads are destroyed and blocked by heavy transport traffic and regular vibrations contribute to decreasing the bearing capacity parameters so why are the majority of roads built in this imperfect way the implementation of the new soil modification technology for complete base creation of all road categories 
requires the order certification procedure and release from routine thinking on layered road construction. We have just started this ambitious process. Imagine if soil is hydrophobized uh, by various chemical uh, Zydex people have invented and there are many more coming uh, tomorrow. I think, I think Dr. Prakash Mehta will also share that how they are making soil hydrophobic. So imagine what tremendous application we have. Uh, we have seen uh, unlined canals. So imagine if these unlined canals are hydrophobized, there are no seepage losses. There is no vegetation. And uh, imagine uh, water tanks are leakaged. So if you use uh, this uh, carbon nanotube and other things, then they will never be corroded and there will no seepage from water tanks. And so, and, and so forth, there are so many applications. So uh, let's see more, right? So can soil be made hydrophobic? I think Zycosil, uh, sir has narrated, but sir never showed us the video. I'll show you the video of the Zydex people only. <laughs> sir told us the all mechanism. SIO bond, silane bond, but sir didn't show us the video. I'll show you the video. Because visualization is more important. Even if you mix it, even if you puncture it, right, it remains hydrophobic. So imagine all these applications. Right? So um, no potholes, it can restrict seepage losses in canal failure of structure due to water movement like piping and slip failure, landslides, all can be avoided. And uh, swelling nature of black cotton soil can be treated, no uh, swelling shrinkage. And uh, various materials we are using to control uh, the black cotton soil, fly ash. So we tried nano lime, we derived nano lime in our laboratory with the help of our uh, chemistry and physics faculty. Uh, we derived nano silica from the rice husk ash. The multi wall carbon nanotube we procure. Uh, but we are in the process of uh, deriving carbon nano. We call it carbon six. And combination of all these we tried. Uh, our PhD candidates, Smith Kacha and uh, Parth Lakhani. Bhumika Parsanya working at civil engineering department. They are working on these principles. So nano lime, this is how it was manufactured. Uh, 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 calcium chloride, hydrogen uh, water, sodium hydroxide and distilled water. Then it was calcinated to get calcium hydroxide. And, and it was treated in magnetic stirrer and then Whatever powder we form, we checked with the XRD and uh, FE fluorescent electron, uh, scanning electron microscopy. Uh, this is two micrometer, then one micrometer and 200 nanometers. So dimensions, uh, this dimension, this much is 200 nanometer. So approximately this much is more than, but this, pipe, right? 
this is so there are hundreds or 50 nanometer so we could uh, make it up to nano level so this is the nano line and then uh, that is the sol gel method we used right so fly ash also and that is the entire uh, process of how we made it uh, then uh, we did certain test on virgin black cotton soil then uh, replacing soil by 20 percent fly ash and 0.5 percent nano lime and you can see the red one is a virgin and liquid limit uh, it reduced up to 20 percent right and uh, this is how it worked then we did shrinkage limit so shrinkage limit also uh, increased so these are the various uh, test and combination uh, we replaced up to 80 percent of flyers because we want to utilize the as much amount of waste as possible right so with no line uh, the free swell index uh, because this is 80 percent flyer so obviously it will be zero but when there is a 40 percent fly ash uh, with no lime you can see no nano lime the free swell index was still very high at 28 days it was still low but it was very high but even if we add 0.5 percent nano lime the free swell index turns out to be zero right and uh, with 20 percent fly ash uh, also at 0.5 the significantly from 27 it reduces to uh, 7 i think there is some mistake here right and uh, uh, at one percent also uh, it reduced right so we not only can uh, perform the uh, pre swell index we performed uh, a unconfined compressive strength also and uh, with 40 percent fly ash 0.5 percent nano lime 40 percent fly ash 1 percent nano lime and that too at uh, one day seven day and 28 days curing and uh, much strength was improved right so ucs you can see uh, this is 60 percent black 40 percent 0.5 nano lime and blue is uh, 20 percent and 0.5 nano lime so we got 162 so this is uh, how we are working uh, further there were another sets of test uh, black cotton soil with 0.25 percent of multi-wall carbon nanotube and black cotton soil with 0.5 multi 0.5 uh, percent multi wall carbon nanotube, but these results were not encouraging. So black cotton soil directly with uh, carbon nanotube is not a good option. But uh, black cotton soil with uh, fly ash and nano lime is a good option. Again, we used calcium based bentonite with multi wall carbon nanotube. Again, results were not impressive. Then we did uh, black cotton soil with nano silica and nano lime. So uh, here uh, we could uh, uh, liquid limit again, we were able to reduce by uh, 13 to 14 per percentage uh, from very high to we can reduce to MH classification, right? Shrinkage limit is not done yet. Uh, the process is on, and UCS is also increased, right? Free swell on index is also reduced. Yet uh, it should reduce to less than ten. So we are trying. We are trying, and only nano lime and nano nano silica. So here we are trying to use fly ash because fly ash with fly ash it was giving better results so we are trying to get uh, flyish another testing 
so uh, nano fly ash and nano silica right so these are the various attempts uh, of uh, our experimentation right so if we come at conclusion right from all entire this session right so nanotechnology is a very versatile technology which has diverse fields of application and good outcome is obtained from strength and conductivity viewpoint for cement concrete but durability aspect uh, is yet to be researched looking to the potential of nanomaterial lot of scope is available for its research in civil engineering right and uh, there are, there will be a paradigm shift in civil engineering practice with the introduction of the novel uh, nano materials uh, lots of work is presently done in the area of geo environment particularly remedying pollutants from soil and ground water but very few research work is done on improvement of the cbr or hydrophobic soil application uh, and consolidation area so that is uh, open area if anybody wants to work in this domain a lot of scope is available for young geotechnical engineers to explore this field in geotechnical engineering for improving shear parameter you can perform box shear triaxial cu cc cd test reduce soil shrink behavior permeability uh, from our experiments fly ash shows positive sign on controlling obviously fly ash is the very established uh, uh, material so fly ash is there but we are trying to get nano fly ash also and that testing is going on so optimum doses for swelling index uh, was uh, 20% fly ash and 0.5% nano lime after curing period of 28 days it was giving good the prime reason for this stabilizing effect was agglomerate of the small clay size soil particle and it converted into the silt size particle so that was there now compared to different dosage of nano lime and fly ash 80% black cotton 20% fly ash and uh, 0.5 nano lime it gives good result now further the result test help us to utilize fly ash in a huge amount uh, for soil stabilization and at the same time if we compared lime with nano lime the generally uh, micro lime or regular lime is used 12% but nano lime only 0.5% it can be used so that is the we are indirectly addressing the uh, point of sustainability now another major aspect which is missing here is the environmental point of view because whenever we are doing research with a new material its toxicity and other side effects pertaining to environment or ecosystem must be checked so that is also a uh, undiscovered area so whether because working with nanotechnology itself because you need to wear a mask you need to wear a uh, specs you need to wear glove because it is a very powder form even if it is uh, flown even if you can imagine the cement is flown the cement particles are less than 90 micrometer whereas this carbon nanotube nano titanium dioxide they are of the nano level so they can immediately uh, uh, fly everywhere it can be inhaled and we don't know whether carbon nanotube has carcinogenic or any other side effects or not so that is very very high risk to human so lots of care is to be taken when you work with carbon nanotube another challenge is that because uh, it is in research phase and we don't have much manufacturing devices in india who manufacture actually carbon nanotube or other things commercially so cost is very high uh, I think one kg of carbon nanotube cost around 40,000 rupees. So that the, that is also another great challenge, right? So that is all about uh, the nanotechnology applications. And these are the reference, right? So now I invite question and answers uh, for this session.
Yes, uh, hydrophobic concrete is really more sustainable because uh, uh, it will increase durability. So uh, the life cycle, uh, I mean, let's say if concrete is not durable, then probably after 20 or 30 years, you need to demolish it. And uh, maybe 40 years, you need to demolish and reconstruct or you need to do repair. So hydrophobic concrete means you are ensuring more durability. So definitely it is addressing sustainability indirectly. Any other questions, please? And to answer Hima Madam's question, whether single wall carbon nanotube or multiple carbon nanotube is suitable for improving tensile strength. We have not worked on tensile strength, but maybe yes, uh, multiple carbon nanotube would be better. Uh, you see some of the literature and uh, you will find that multiple carbon nanotube is more versatile over single wall carbon nanotube. So you should get that way it is a better. But tensile strength on concrete is not done. Of course, compressive strength is increasing tremendously. Even if we add uh, 0.5 to 1%, the compressive strength is increased from uh, 20 megapascal to up to 70, 80 megapascal. So any more questions? So hope you enjoyed this session and these are the few uh, web references which I used uh, here in my presentation, right? So you can go through them. Thank you for your patience listening. And uh, if you have any doubt, you can either write me an email or you can contact me on this number. Yes. Any more question? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Siddharth, sir. It was indeed a wonderful session. Uh, oh. We almost got uh, clarification about each and every aspect about how nanotechnology is applied. So thanks a lot, sir. On behalf of the audience, I would like to uh, give you a big congratulations for organizing as well as uh, delivering a really wonderful session. Thank, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you all for patience listening. And we'll see you tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., right? Thank you all.